Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video we have a ton to talk about because we have obviously our two tropical storms and then four tropical disturbances alongside those two tropical storms. Tons and tons going on in the tropics right now. Now before I get started with this video though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather related content and also make sure to share this video with your friends, family, and social media. Now I'd also ask that you check out our very exciting Patreon page in the description and the pinned comment down below. Now for today's comment of the day, I want to know, do you think that any of these will have any impacts on the United States, and if they do, which one do you think it will be and where? Let me know in the comments down below, and I'll be picking one of these for tomorrow's video, and I'll also be coming back to these to check out and see if any of them were right. Alright, now let's get into this video, and we're taking a look at the two-day graphical tropical weather outlook, and as you can see, uh, there's only five showing up here. You can see there's a 10% chance offshore of the Carolinas, a 0% chance uh over the Bahamas right now, it's going to be moving generally westward where it's going to increase in probability. We have Paulette and Renee, of course, and then we have a 60% chance there just offshore. Well, it's onshore of Africa. It's going to be coming offshore of Africa. And then there's going to be a sixth one there that only shows up on the five-day outlook. So we'll be showing that in just a moment. All right, now let's take a look at our first disturbance here on the five-day graphical tropical weather outlook. And this one is the one that has a 0% chance on the two-day, but as you can see on the five-day... Uh, we can see that it's going to move over Florida and then into the Gulf where a lot could occur there. So we're going to want to watch this one closely. Could potentially be a threat for the Gulf states. Uh, but at this point, it only has a 20% chance of development. So it's looking relatively low at this point. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move on. and We're going to take a look at the one off the East Coast. That one off of Africa that doesn't show up on the two-day outlook. And then we're going to take a look at that one that has a 90% chance that's just onshore of Africa. So here's that second disturbance, and as you can see, there's only a 10% chance of this one developing at this point because it's so close to the coast and it still hasn't gotten its act together. It does not appear like it will at all. We will take a look at the spaghetti models and the intensity guidance, but again, it's such a limited amount of time and it hasn't done anything so far. I really, really think this one's uh, going to just stay a disturbance that comes on shore and bring some showers, maybe a little tiny bit of wind, but really it's going to be a non-event. Uh, and then we have our one that didn't show up on the five or the, sorry, the two day outlook here. And you can see over the next five days, it will have a 30% chance of development. This could be the next African wave we end up talking about. That's a very long tracked system heading generally westward. Obviously, uh, we'll have to watch that one closely. And uh, this one's going to be probably the most problematic one to talk about over the next five days, next week, even into the one after that. And this one has a 90% chance of development, and it's going to be heading generally westward. This is going to be another case of us needing to pay attention to if it's going to go north of Puerto Rico or south of Puerto Rico, uh, and then tracking it towards the United States, where it could eventually pose a threat. Uh, very, very dangerous situation. This one's already going to have a 90% chance of development. This could be one of our next major tropical cyclones. We're going to want to watch this one very, very closely, and obviously here at Direct Weather, we will be. All right, now what we're going to do next is we're going to take a look at both of the cone forecasts for Tropical Storm Paulette and Tropical Storm Rene, uh, and then we're going to take a look at the spaghetti model and intensity guidance for all three of our systems where we have access for it. All right, now first things first, here is that cone forecast for Tropical Storm Paulette. And again, I said it a couple days ago, I think this one is going to be um, a bigger storm than... Uh, Renee, and I think that's holding true at this point. Uh, originally, we thought Renee, well, everybody thought Renee would be the bigger of the two. Paulette just has more potential at this point with where that one's headed. It seems apparent that this one will eventually become a hurricane. So I'm giving it a maybe a 70 or 80% chance of eventually becoming a hurricane. Uh, and it appears to stay a tropical storm for a while here as it approaches Bermuda. So if you're in Bermuda watching, you're going to want to watch this one very closely. This could be one of those situations where we see a head-on collision there, uh, but hopefully it goes west or east of you, obviously, uh, minimalizing the impacts there. This one will eventually uh, look to potentially pose a threat to the east coast of the United States or potentially stay offshore. It really depends where that high-pressure system sets up. Uh, over a week from now so we have a long way to go before we can talk about that but this one down the road could potentially pose a threat let's go ahead and move on towards tropical storm renee uh, and this one appears to stay a tropical storm throughout the entire cone towards tuesday at about 2 a.m as well 
Uh, but it does appear to briefly have a chance to become a hurricane at about 2 p.m. on Saturday. We'll watch that closely. I don't think this one will become a hurricane, however. I give it a 50-50 chance, but I really don't think this one will. Keep in mind, this one does kind of look to potentially curve back westward at the very end of that cone. That would be interesting if this one heads uh, back towards Bermuda and, again, potentially poses an, an East Coast threat just like Paulette. Uh, obviously, that would be worst-case scenario, so we're really hoping that does not occur uh, but it is on the table at this point with where the steering pattern is taking these storms as of lately. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on. We're going to take a look at Invest 94L, the spaghetti model guidance and the intensity guidance. That's the one just offshore of the Carolinas. Uh, and then we're going to take a look at both of our tropical storms on satellite imagery, spaghetti models and intensity guidance. Uh, and then we're going to close out the video. All right, now here we are first off taking a look at Invest 94L. Again, this is the one offshore of the Carolinas there. And as you can see, the, the track seems pretty certain. You might be wondering why am I using the GEFS parallel? Uh, only because this one gives a really good idea of where this one's going to track and it shows you multiple members. I want this, I want it to be clear that the cone is still somewhat wide with where this one is gonna bring the most impacts. But again, generally a very weak storm. Although when we look at the intensity guidance here, uh, we only see that there's one, two, three, four, five models here, and one out of the five takes it to a tropical storm, and then four out of the five have it becoming more intense than it is right now, only one seeing it drop in intensity. I think that in this case, it's not very likely that it intensifies more. I think the problem here is that there's just a lack of models even picking up on this one right now, so we're only getting a very limited amount of opinions here. I don't think this one is going to intensify very much. Looking at satellite imagery, it did not look very good whatsoever. So I really do not think that this one uh, is going to intensify whatsoever as it moves towards the East Coast and especially the Carolinas there in between South Carolina and North Carolina, but especially North Carolina. But with this type of system, it doesn't really matter where it comes on shore. It's just going to be pretty much spread out showers uh, and a little bit of gusty winds, maybe, but I doubt it at this point. All right, now what we're going to do here is we're going to move on and then we're going to take a look at both of our tropical storms, Renee and Paulette, on satellite imagery, spaghetti models, and intensity guidance. All right, now let's go ahead and start out with tropical storm Renee. Here it is on satellite imagery, and we have a pretty good organized area of very tall clouds. Uh, this one does not seem too shabby right now, but uh, when I looked at it on an animated uh, frame by frame look it really appears to have weakened a little bit over the past maybe 12 or 24 hours here uh, but we'll watch it closely but again I don't expect this one to become a hurricane anyway or impact land whatsoever so really um, this is a, not going to be too much of a factor here this one tropical storm Renee uh, looks to be more of a fish storm at this point here's the spaghetti model guidance and this one is really gonna you know spread out here as you can see uh, moving forward the big thing to note here is there's a huge difference between, if you take a look at that bottom one, the HMNI model or the EGRI model there, the blue one at the very top. There's a huge difference in where those ones are heading. If the blue one is correct, and a lot of the models agree with that one as opposed to the more southern one, uh, that would be a non-event. But if it takes that green or purple track down there, then we're all of a sudden talking about potential impacts to Bermuda and then further out, maybe impacts to the United States potentially. Uh, so there's a huge difference uh, depending on which of those two options it takes or anywhere in between, obviously. Here's the intensity guidance here, however. Only one, well, actually you see uh, maybe three show it becoming a category one because those two down there kind of scrape that yellow uh, layer there just a tiny bit. But there is one that takes it well into the um, category one status. And actually it's that one that had it very, very far south. So that would be obviously the more impactful solution, but a majority of these models have it as a weak or moderate tropical storm for a very long time to come, kind of just not able to really intensify beyond that point. All right, now let's take a look at tropical storm Paulette on satellite, and I think Shear is getting to this one right now, although I do expect Paulette to get its act back together. Very tall clouds there still has a very organized area of some thunderstorms. I think this one is going to potentially become a hurricane again, maybe a 60 to 80% chance of becoming a hurricane at this point. Uh, a lot of the spaghetti models have this one curving back east after it takes that northerly track there. Uh, it would be interesting to see that happen, and obviously that would be the less impactful solution. Though that cluster of models there where you can hardly even see the names there where all of them kind of cross paths, I believe that's actually... Uh, around the location of Bermuda there. So we'll want to watch it closely. Um, 
especially for Bermuda. I don't think the East Coast is likely an impact for this one, uh, but we will have to watch it closely. I wanted to show the GEFS uh, model here. This was just yesterday morning. I wanted to show this because this is how spread out the models were just 12 hours ago, or sorry, 24 hours ago. Uh, and, and it can come back to a solution like this where there is those potential tracks bringing it very close to the United States. So I don't want our guard to be completely down now. There's still a good five days until uh, that very big spread happens. So a lot of things can change. These models do flip-flop a lot. Uh, and I'm not, I'm not thinking the United States is out of the water for Paulette at all. As of right now, this seems to become a very strong storm. As you can see, a lot of the members become orange, red, even purple or pink. That's indicating very strong storms, category two, three, uh, maybe more there. Uh, based on pressure, that's not always the fact. The, the truth there, sometimes it can be very low pressure and not be as intense, uh, but generally as a rule of thumb, that would indicate a stronger storm there. Here's the intensity guidance, and as you can see, uh, it actually is going to weaken a little bit, and again, it's I think it's being impacted by shear, so over the next 24 hours, it might become a weaker tropical storm, uh, but after about day three at about hour 72, we see a huge jump in intensity, and only a couple of models don't have it becoming a category one, so a vast majority actually do have this one eventually becoming a category one, potentially even two or more there, according to a very select few of those models. So we'll have to watch this one very, very closely. But again, I think out of all of these, actually, that red 90% five-day chance is the one I'm the most worried about because the track just seems a little bit more likely uh, for land impact. So we'll watch it very closely. Again, we will be updating the tropics very frequently for the next few months, actually. So rest assured, we will be talking about this again as new information comes out. Anyway, for yesterday's comment of the day, I asked you guys to tell me your weirdest weather story. And Ray... Uh, Zalanka, I don't know how to say your last name, uh, said a really cool story. I'm not going to say all of it, but basically a flooding event back in Florida, back in the late 70s there. Uh, and I actually did a little bit of research on this because I thought it was such an interesting story. And I was able to find a news article, and I'm going to link that news article in the description and the pinned comment as well for you guys to find, especially Ray. Uh, I think you will find it very cool since obviously you were uh, a part of this experience. I don't know if you've had access to these stories or not. But here's a picture from that article uh, from the, the Bay Area there in Florida, the Tampa Bay Area, that is. Uh, and this is a lady on an inflatable boat. As you can see, tremendous amount of flooding. And you, there's tons of pictures like this in the article. So I think it'll be a really cool uh, read for you guys. And it was a very devastating event, actually. A lot of people lost their lives. And there was a few tornadoes as well with that. So a very interesting weather event. Um, and I think that's definitely a weird, wacky story there with up to at least 16 inches of rain, like Ray said, and uh, multiple tornadoes, the article uh, said, occurred as well. So very interesting weather story to read, a part of weather history. Uh, if you click that article down there that I'm going to leave, again, in the description and the pinned comment down below. All right, anyway, for our patron highlights of the day, uh, I want to welcome a new Diamond patron, Cindy Klein. Welcome to the Diamond patron uh, group. We have Alicia Davis now, Mad Birds, Dan Hazard, Cindy Klein, and Mark J., as our Diamond Patrons, I want to thank all of you for supporting the channel. Also, our Platinum Patron, Donna Carnes. If you'd like to support the channel, you can check out the Patreon page in the description and the pinned comment down below. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, be sure to share it with your friends, family, and social media. I will see you guys in the next video.